Coming up on the premiere of UMass Sports Insider, the waiting is over and a new season of Minutemen football is about to begin. We'll preview the 2011 season on the gridiron and look back at an eventful offseason. Also, we pay respects to one of the greatest athletes in UMass history, and we go on the practice field with Coach Morris to see what the team is working on to prepare for kickoff. Getting ready to go, UMass Sports Insider starts now. Now, this is the UMass Sports Insider, brought to you by Coca-Cola. It's been quite a year for the UMass football program, earning national headlines from the memorable performance at Michigan last September, then again in April when the department announced plans to move to the bowl subdivision. Now the next phase in a program history begins as we get set for kickoff 2011. Well, hi and welcome to UMass Sports Insider. I'm your host, Josh Maurer, and each week this season, we'll be bringing you features, highlights, and inside access to all of your favorite minute men and minute women teams. So make sure you tune in each week from now until March. As you can see behind me, the team is hard at work getting ready for the season opener Thursday night at Holy Cross. So it's time now to check in with head coach Kevin Morris. Adidas presents the game. Let's see what the team's doing to prepare, coach. Hey, thanks, Josh. Hey, we've had a great, not only a week, but really a month to get ready for this opening game Thursday night. Kids are really excited. Right now, we're catching the tail end of our practice, which is here on Monday, which technically is normally a Tuesday practice for us so we're playing on a Saturday game. So we had a great practice so far today. What we got left today is out right now. We've got our kick return unit out working with our scout, giving a great Holy Cross look from off of some of last year's tape. Hey, I got with me right now is Randall Jett, freshman. Randall's on a team we call the Marines. And the Marines right now running down the field, giving the Holy Cross look for our for our kickoff return unit. How's it going, Randall? It's going good. We're trying to get a good look, trying to simulate what they were doing in the game. You know, fundamentals, flying down, having fun. When you got fast guys like Randall Jett on the squad, it gives us a great look. So we'll certainly be ready for what Holy Cross has to bring with Randall getting his job done. Should be good. So yeah, to get ready for Holy Cross, we've got a lot of work to do, and we've been working really all preseason long, really from last year through the winter and spring with the opener on our mind. And at this point in the game, it's all about polishing and getting things done exactly right. Defensively, just trying to get some final looks done in terms of what they do offensively in their spread set. Their quarterbacks, both seniors, with tar tag it back. We've got to try to get to them early and often and, uh, and make them make plays, make the quarterback make plays. So that's a plan for us defensively. Offensively, we're looking to really get on top of Holy Cross early. We got up early last year, and certainly that's where we want to be this year, particularly with the young quarterback we just named Brandon Hill the starter today, and then he's trying to polish up those final looks, making sure he has all the Holy Cross concepts down. Good, a real good preseason all along for Brandon Hill and the offense, and uh, again, same thing as defensively on offense now, trying to polish it up, finish it up right, make sure everything's down to the exact science, every step, every rep is perfect. Kickoff will be Thursday night, September the 1st at 8 o'clock. It's the first ever night game for Holy Cross at Fitton Field. You can watch it live nationally on the CBS Sports Network or listen on the radio and internet anywhere on the UMass Sports Network. Well, UMass will have a young bunch on offense and defense going into the season, but one that the coaching staff on each side of the ball is very excited about. With more on the 2011 team, here's Ezra Broder. Thanks, Josh. This year's offense has one major difference, a new quarterback. Two-year starter Kyle Havens is gone, leaving the door open for redshirt freshman Brandon Hill. Um, it feels good, you know. I feel like um, more power is brought to me, you know, because last year I backed up Kyle, you know, and then this year now since I'm taking the reins, it, it feels pretty good. The quarterbacks that have uh, been in competition have adjusted well and they've been uh, doing good things, so I feel pretty comfortable with them. Even with Hill's lack of experience, the ball will usually end up in good hands. Those of senior running back Jonathan Hernandez. John Hernandez is always uh, reliable, so uh, having him in the backfield is always a good thing. Um, you can always count on him, so uh, it makes everything easier for other players as well as the quarterback playing on the field. Hernandez ran for just under 1,000 yards and nine touchdowns last season, and that was while splitting carries. Expect even bigger numbers this season. Our offense is explosive as any offense I've ever seen, so you know, we just gotta execute through our assignments and you know, win ball games. The offensive line remains mostly intact, and at receiver, Julian Talley looks to be the main target. And co-captain Emil Iguanagu is healthy. He says motivation isn't an issue with his offense. I thought it would be coming into camp, but honestly, it hasn't been that hard. Everybody here obviously loves to play football, so everybody's just doing what they do best in order to play. As usual, the success of the offense will boil down to the consistency of the quarterback. 
It's always the quarterback's job to make sure that the team's executing, and the team's doing well. Um, no matter if I'm a freshman, no matter if I'm a retro freshman or whatever, you know, it's all my play and I gotta just take care of it. A big change on defense too. A new coordinator and a new defensive scheme. No big deal for All-American linebacker Tyler Holmes. Football is football, so it's just a little bit of adjustment, you know. Um, you know, like I said, I took it in stride, really embraced the new D, and I'm really having a lot of fun playing in it. What I've done defensively suits the type of skills these kids have, and they've adapted. We've made huge gains from the spring to the fall camp here, so which was I was happy about. New coordinator Frank Forcucci and the 3-4 defense should produce more turnovers, more action for the fans at McGurk. They don't see the defense attacking more. You know, we're very um, aggressive in this defense. You know, a lot of people blitzing. Um, you know, it gives all 11 players on the field the ability to make game-changing plays and spectacular plays. The strength once again is the linebackers, led by the preseason favorite for Defensive Player of the Year, Tyler Holmes. Our job is to put him in position to make plays, but even in that case, when when he's not in the best position, he'll still make a play. He'll make plays for you, make sure you look good. We have the most experience, you know, myself, Perry McIntyre, um, DJ Adioba, Courtney Jackson. I think together we probably have the most starts, um, but the defensive line has showed tremendous progress this whole preseason camp and really came a long way since the spring. The defensive line has impressed this preseason, led by Theo Agnew and Brandon Potvin. We've stopped the run really well, which is what it's all about. We stopped the run and we're getting after the quarterback, so they've done a great job. That, the defensive line is definitely the highlight of the, the camp. The defensive backfield has a year experience under its belt. It even added former Hoops player Gary Correa. You know, we got guys like Darren Thelen that's really stepped up, took a leadership role, and, you know, really being more vocal, you know, kind of takes pressure off myself. So all in all, the defense will go as far as Tyler Holmes can take it. For UMass Sports Insider, I'm Ezra Broder. Thanks, Ezra. Well, as you just heard, one of the Minutemen who features to carry a bulk of the load on offense is a Bay State native who hails from Lemonster and is getting ready for a homecoming for the season opener at Holy Cross. With more, Big Y presents In the Bunker with Jonathan Hernandez. John Hernandez, retro senior, running back from Lemonster, Mass. At the time, UMass made it to the national championship, and that really, like, dragged me in to come in here. So. That was a big reason why I came here, you know, and the tradition here is, it's a great tradition and um, there's a lot of uh, UMass, Central Mass people that are UMass fans, so that too brought me here. People have been following me since high school and that brings a lot of fans here. A lot of Central Mass kids, that brings a lot of hope for younger kids that come from Mass so, um, to make it to a Division One school. Still to this day, I, I, I'm never going to forget that, that game. It was just, it was a dream come true, really. Because I always watched Michigan I, as a, when I was a young, I was a Michigan fan actually, but um, not that day obviously. Last season in the CAA, so what we want to do, we want to come out and beat every team in the CAA. And um, we're all competitors on this team, and we're all football players, and Coach Moore stresses competing every day in practice, going full speed every day in practice, and that's what we're going to bring to the table on Saturdays. I mean, I've been, I've been training really hard this, over the summer because I knew this, this was going to come. And, um, but we also have two other great running backs, Jamar Smith and um, Allen Williams, so I can also get the job done. But, you know, I have a, I have a lot of pressure on my, on my back, but um, I think I'm good. I trained for it. I think I'm ready. I know I'm ready, and I know our team's ready, and I have a great offensive line that, that all of them are coming back. So I think we're going to be good this year. John Hernandez was second in the CAA in rushing as a junior last season, now is one of the backfield leaders. He'll look to continue that success as a senior. Well, last April, UMass made an announcement that many fans have been waiting to hear for decades. It happened at Gillette Stadium on a Wednesday afternoon. Let's take a look back at one of the memorable days in program history, UMass making the move to the bowl subdivision. It was a day a long time in the making. The football program of the Commonwealth's flagship campus, the University of Massachusetts Amherst, will join the Mid-American Conference and move into the football bowl subdivision, the nation's top tier of college football. Starting in 2012, the Minutemen become full-time members of the Mid-American Conference and are eligible for bowl games in 2013. It's a great league and you know, UMass is making a, a great jump to the MAC here. Going to Division One is not only just a football move, it's a school move, it's a, it's a reputation move and I think it's a great one. Playing at the top level of college football is consistent with our role as the flagship campus of the Commonwealth. 
UMass Amherst is the premier public research university in the state and in the region with an expansive alumni base. It is only fitting that we should play in the premier division of college football. In the final analysis, the addition of the University of Massachusetts Amherst brings value to the Mid-American Conference. UMass, welcome to the Mid-American Conference. Welcome to the FBS. Welcome to the BCS. There's a reason the press conference was held at Gillette Stadium. That's the new home for UMass football, starting in 2012. And I think it's a way to connect the UMass graduates back to their campus and, and feel connected uh, to their school more by coming right here to Gillette and everything we have going on around here. And we look forward to UMass playing some championships. For UMass Sports Insider, I'm Ezra Broder. UMass is in its first year of the transition to the Bull subdivision. This year they'll play a full FCS schedule, while next season in 2012 they'll play a full Bull division season. You're watching the UMass Sports Insider. Welcome back to UMass Sports Insider. It's our season premiere here from McGurk Stadium. Well, every week we're going to take a look back at a memorable game from UMass sports history. And today, in honor of the football team's opener at Holy Cross on Thursday night, we look at the last time they traveled to Fitton Field in Worcester, a thriller that went all the way down to the final play of the game, September 6, 2008. Quickly. Nelson on the carry, follows his pullback, spins through a tackle and into the end zone. So UMass opens the second half with a long march for a touchdown. Second and goal from the one. Iguanagu goes in motion. They give it to Nelson. He tries to leap over the top, but he breaks in. Touchdown, Nelson. And UMass has taken the lead. First and goal for Holy Cross. Randolph has time to the end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown, Freddie Santana. The kick is up, he's got the length, and it is good. And that is the final play of the game. Armando Cuco on the final play of the game has kicked a 42-yard field goal. And UMass has escaped with a 45-42 victory here at Fitton Field. Some symmetry between that year's game and this. In 2008, the game ended just hours before Tropical Storm Hannah hit the region. This year, it's just days after Irene came through the Bay State. Well, the Hi, my name is Jeremy Miles. I played safety at UMass from 2007 to 2010. Um, you know, I came, now I'm with the Cincinnati Bengals, and you know, I'm having a good time with that. I learned a lot at UMass, and, you know, definitely prepared me for this future. My number one memory here at UMass was when I played at Delaware. We played home right, right in McGurk, and I caught the interception and took it back 50 yards for a touchdown. That was, that was my greatest moment, and, you know, every time I think, I just think about that moment. I'm just proud of the program, and it just shows how far UMass has come. And, you know, we, we, we came from a small 1AA school, and now we're moving up to the big time, man. And, you know, hopefully these guys get a chance to play in these bowl games games and you know sky's the limit for this program. I just currently finished my first season with the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, now I'm just aspiring to just keep training and, and you know keep myself motivated and I'm waiting for the season to start and I'll be back at, uh, at Cincinnati and I'll be ready to go and take ho hopefully take over that, that role, that starting role at safety or if not you know whatever team that really wants me I'll pursue that. Jeremy Miles played in six games as a rookie last season with the Cincinnati Bengals. He'll look for an increased role in the secondary and on special teams in 2011. Well, on this show, we try to give you an inside look at UMass teams that you don't get anywhere else. And in this segment that we call X's and O's, we take you on the practice field with a UMass coach. Now let's check in with Kevin Morris and see what the football team's been doing to get ready for the season to begin. Down here in the old line zone, and this is the old line takes over this corner right here, spends all their time grazing on the grass here. Not a lot of grazing here. Man. These guys work. I mean, our old line, Prime Cooch does a great job on the offensive line. He's also our offensive coordinator. And then you get the old linemen really work down here. This is where we make our money right here as a football team on offense. And these guys control the tempo of the game by controlling the line of scrimmage. Let's watch out some of the work. This is a shoot drill where they're looking at getting their second step down with a great punch. Second step down with a great punch, staying low. That's why we have them in the shoot so they don't pop up and play tall. We want to play low. Good pad level all the time. Good strike on the second step down and a good finish and torque. This is for the second level when you're going up to the linebacker level. So you're in the more open space. So we really work on, again, the good focus. And same thing, target, punch, 
and good pad level. So we're looking to skate out, get a good target. Again, you're in the open field, and the line, the old offensive lineman, excuse me, usually at a disadvantage in the open field. But we really try to work on it to get these guys used to working on the second level, being open field, aggressive, but not fanning. You don't want your guys to lunge. Stefan Milham, our right tackle, doing a great job with a double hand, double under right there. Clint. Josh Amuda, there's Anthony Dima, our left tackle. And if you can get your whole lineman to get on backers on the second level, as we're in great shape. If you can get them on the second level, um, that's when the big hits come. And the running back, you know, your offensive line's got to take care of the first level. If you get an offensive lineman to the second level, that's when things really take. That's when you see the big hits by John Hernandez, is when these old linemen are getting to the second level, getting a pad on a pad on a linebacker.